last time we were trying to uh, demonstrate how it is possible that uh, in the pluralistic and democratic society as the United States, uh, it is possible that uh, uh, the society is facing the growing process of uh, polarization and also division uh, caused by uh, religious uh, factors. Uh, I was using uh, this famous uh, classic already a book by uh, two uh, sociologists, uh, Robert uh, Patman and uh, David uh, Campbell, Campbell, American Grace, uh, which uh, has exactly this uh, subtitle, how religion divide us and unite us uh, in, in the same time, so to say. And uh, uh, due to uh, technical uh, difficulties, uh, we had some problems in, in, in discussing the issue, but uh, uh, I think that altogether um, it was uh, clear for for you and for those who took part in the discussion that uh, religion, uh, particularly if it's taken very seriously, uh, is a phenomenon which uh, the last 50, 60 years in the history of United States has this uh, polarizing effect. Uh, some of you referring also to his uh, biography in America uh, detect this process of, of uh, uh, looking for those who are thinking uh, similarly and uh, in a way isolating uh, small groups from, so from the rest. And uh, these divisions uh, are based on political sympathies and also on um, religious uh, affiliations or lack of these uh, affiliations. Uh, some of you also, when I asked uh, if the Catholic Church could be considered as a, a fundamentalistic uh, organization or institution or even sect, um, uh, draw our attention to historical roots of this institution and uh, we can say that uh, Roman Catholicism is uh, inherited, so to say, a structure uh, from Roman um, Roman Empire. And uh, of course, historically speaking, uh, it is uh, correct, this is, is right, uh, but uh, in our meeting today, I would like to focused our attention less on uh, historical um, roots, uh, which are very important, but since uh, we are uh, living in 21st century, so perhaps uh, more interesting and uh, uh, related uh, directly to, to our own world is uh, how this institution, after so many changes, uh, uh, there are a great speech about uh, Second Vatican Council and the radical, even Copernican transformation of the attitude of this uh, institution toward uh, more, more modernity, toward other institutions, etc. But uh, I'm intriguing uh, how it works in practice. And uh, I invite you today, also using uh, some uh, uh, materials which I put on the platform, uh, to, to reflect upon how it is today. Is still really a fundamentalistic, or perhaps uh, if we take seriously what uh, the church uh, declared or are declaring by, through bishops, popes, priests, uh, and, and of course popes, uh, that uh, Catholicism today is different. It's not the same as it was 
in medieval time as it was even in 16th, 17th century. And uh, I think that the good uh, uh, occasion to reflect or to analyze how uh, uh, the Catholic Church works together is a, a recent uh, uh, disappearance or one of the most brilliant and very influential theologian uh, who is, uh, was a Swiss, but all his uh, life he spent in, in Germany. Uh, and uh, we, we have a lot of uh, re uh, media reactions when he passed away, 6th of April, and I collected uh, some of them uh, from New York Times, National Catholic Reporter, America Magazine, and so on. You can you can see it. It's on the title about Hans King, where I collected some some voices about him. And in few seconds, uh, you will see why I, I thought that it uh, to follow these reactions. And perhaps also, if you will have time to uh, to have a look on his. Uh, uh, biography available everywhere, also in Wikipedia, which is not the most uh, solid source, but is on the hand, so why not to, to, to have a look uh, on some data, when he was born, what he wrote, with whom he discussed, and which kind of uh, factors uh, uh, shaped him. Exactly uh, all the problem of the relationship between uh, our biography and the way how we perceived uh, the reality or how we judge uh, what is going around us. So um, to put it briefly, I uh, think that uh, Roman Catholicism is a fundamentalistic sect, is a very unfriendly toward democracy, toward pluralism, uh, but in order to give you good arguments for my position, I thought that exactly the life and uh, uh, some uh, troubles which uh, this Catholic uh, priest faced in his life, a good illustration of this thesis. So it's not the abstract uh, uh, hypothesis, but it's the illustration based on the a concrete uh, life of, of Hans King. His name is Hans King. Uh, but we need some um, historical background uh, in order to better understand uh, his case. So this historical background is the first Vatican Council. Uh, from general knowledge, you remember that it happened in uh, 1870 exactly in the time when uh, Vatican State lost uh, its uh, terrestrial uh, um, territory. It was the time when Italy, uh, thanks to Garibaldi, Cavour, and etc., uh, united all uh, regions of Italy, and also the, the state uh, of uh, Catholic Church was taken from, from the church and uh, uh, the new state, the modern Italy, was born exactly uh, in the time when this uh, first Vatican Council took place. Uh, apart the history and dramatical uh, elements of this history, what is important that during this council uh, the new dogma was defined, namely infallibility of uh, the head of the Catholic Church. Uh, means uh, a dogma which uh, defined that when the Pope is speaking in the name of the, uh, of the people, of the entire Church, in name of the Church, he is infallible. He could not... Uh, commit any errors or mistake. And it was defined like this, and uh, if you are uh, Catholic, you have to, to believe that this dogma is correct, is true. 
but you know, when uh, in modern time uh, we are, ma some of us are Catholics, but we see around us how many mistakes uh, papacy committed historically and also today, we have some problems with this dogma. And Hans King was, uh, as a Catholic priest and a Catholic theologian, was not only uh, articulating these difficulties to accept this dogma in his literal sense, but also uh, articulated some very concrete uh, uh, um, objections. Uh, in a book uh, published exactly 100 years uh, after the dogma was uh, proclaimed, uh, uh, in 1970. 1970. And uh, the paradox is that uh, Hans King took also part on this uh, uh, Second Vatican Council, which took place uh, from 1962 to 1965, and was uh, very actively participating in formulating a new uh, uh, new decrees, uh, new documents where the exactly the openness and tolerance was uh, uh, defined as the way of doing of this uh, institution. And in fact, uh, his uh, book, uh, Infallible, with question mark, was widely discussed also in, in all Catholic countries, a part of Poland, as far as I remember, it was not discussed in, in the 70s. Um, but in America, in the Western world, of course, yes. And what happened uh, to him, uh, not only because of this book, but of many others, uh, that uh, in 1979, uh, the Vatican, and concretely the Pope, uh, uh, John Paul II, deprived uh, Hans King uh, of the rights to teach in the name of the Church. Uh, to put it briefly, the Vatican uh, issued a decree saying, Hans, Professor Hans King is, un, is not Catholic anymore. And of course, it was again huge discussion, how come, etc., etc. But I think this is exactly the way how uh, fundamentalists are reacting. They are not open to discuss, they are not willing to, to accept a different points of view but are simply uh, rejecting them, uh, condemning those who represent different opinions. So you don't have a real liberal uh, democratic discussion, but you have only a one-way uh, monologue. If you are pope or bishop, you, you, you say, and the other have to obey. And King was unwilling to accept this. And uh, for us as Americanists, it's also important that uh, between uh, those who were following his way of being Catholic, because we are still in the Catholic Church, was a, a moral theologian from university, Catholic University from Washington, uh, Charles uh, Current, and. Uh, he was uh, rejecting uh, infallibility of the Pope, uh, particularly connected with Humane Vitae uh, and uh, rejection of the Church of Anticonception and, uh, uh, and so on and so on. And how uh, the Church reacted to uh, Charles uh, Carroll uh, position in the same way, depriving him to, to, to uh, the rights to teach in the name of the church. It happened in 1986, uh, so uh, uh, seven years later.
to summarize and to make my point and uh, my invitation for our um, meeting uh, next week will be uh, that you really read carefully all the six voices which I put on the platform. If you will have time, also have a look on the book which uh, 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 King edited in 1987 with the introduction where you have this debate inside the church. So it's not necessary that you have to uh, reject Catholicism, but as a Catholic you are discussing uh, as a liberal, as a, a tolerant person, uh, you accept the pluralism. And now, if uh, we can do it in side of the church, it means that the church is not fundamentalistic. Is not uh, my uh, hypothesis that still it is a fundamentalistic organization is valid. Is valid. So I will see how you will uh, judge this position during our class.